Hey there everybody, it's game two in the Terry Felton project. I'm trying to win one for Terry Felton. This game occurred May 3rd, 1987 at Fenway Park in Boston. And we moved over to Payoff Pitch Baseball from Stratomatic just to mix it up. And these are the as played lineups from that game. So starters for the Twins. First, uh, Eisenreich in center field will lead off. Mickey Hatcher is in right field hitting second. Ken Herbeck is at first base batting third. Randy Johnson, the DH, will bat cleanup. Gary Ward's in left. He'll hit fifth. Gary Gaetti is the third baseman batting sixth. Butch Weiniger is the catcher hitting seventh. Rob Wilfong, the second baseman, hits eighth. And Ron Washington, the shortstop, bats ninth. And, of course, Terry Felton all on the mound. For the Red Sox, leading off will be second baseman Jerry Remy. Batting second is Dwight Evans in right. Hitting third is Jim Rice in left field. Yes, Carl Yastrzemski is the DH batting cleanup. Carney Lansford is at third base. He'll hit fifth. Dave Stapleton is at first base. He will hit sixth. Batting seventh is shortstop Glenn Hoffman. Hitting eighth is catching uh, Rich Gedman. And batting ninth is center fielder Rick Miller. And the starter is Chuck Rainey. So we're just about ready to go here from Fenway. And again, this is Payoff Pitch by Joe Bryan, PT Games. These are the original cards. Um, when I say original, I mean printed out cards. They're not PDFs. But these are the old style. They're, they're not in the way they make the cards now as far as the design of the cards. So a little bit more old school, I guess. Fenway Park, if we get to the ballpark check, uh, 1 to 18 for wheelhouse for lefties and 1 to 31 wheelhouse for the right handers. So let's look at Chuck Rainey for the Red Sox. He was 7 and 5 with a 502 ERA. So he will be on the mound for the Sox. And of course, Terry Felton is 0 and 13 with a 499 ERA. Did have six starts. So again, this is start number two out of his six starts. Interestingly enough, he does have tough in his 7 and 8 uh, numbers, so that's pretty good for him. And uh, wheelhouse is on 10, so that's not too bad. I've seen worse. So we'll go ahead and see if he can't uh, get a win today. If not, we'll look to game 3 and keep trying until we get there. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do, maybe, we'll see here. I think I'll put the batter cards there. Maybe that will help or work. I don't know. Always experimenting with new uh, setups for these games. Could put the batter card here as well, but it kind of covers up the end. Maybe not. Not too bad. Um, it cuts out a little bit of their uh, bottom here, but I can always lift that up when needed. So I'm going to go ahead and just go with this setup, I think. I'm going to roll on here, and of course there's a score sheet there, so kind of get a glimpse of that. And I also went to my computer game, uh, Diamond Mind Baseball, that I used to play a long time ago, and I have this season on that computer game. And I use that to get the rosters so I know who's available off the bench for each team as of May 3rd, who was on, actually on the roster, so I'm not using guys that weren't on the roster. So the Red Sox bullpen, they have four pitchers in their bullpen. They have Bob Stanley, Mark Clear, Tom Bergmeier, and Louis Aponte. Those are the four pitchers that are available out of the bullpen. Anybody else will be a starter, so we're not going to pull them. And for the batters for the Red Sox, they have Wade Boggs, Tony Perez, Reed Nichols, backup catcher Gary Allenson, and Julio Valdez. So those are the guys that are available to come in either off the bench or from the bullpen. And we'll do the same thing for the Twins. Look and see who they have available. They have uh, a total of five relievers available. The one left-hander, Daryl Jackson, Ron Davis, Bobby Castillo, Fernando Arroyo, and Doug Corbett. One of the great things about payoff pitches is they card every player, which is really, really nice. And then off the bench, they have available John Castino, Backup catcher Sal Butera, Jesus Vega, Lenny Fiedo, Randy Bush, and Bobby Mitchell. So those are the players there. So if you 
their name didn't get called, you will not see them in this game because they they were not on the roster at the time. So I'm going to try to stay as realistic as possible and use the guys that were really there. All right, so all those preambles finally out of the way. About time. Five minutes into this, we can finally get going. So Jim Eisenreich will lead things off. You can see he primarily faced righties because of the um, lack of things here in his column. He f faced righties 83 times, lefties only 16 times. So he's in there to face Chuck Rainey. It's a three for Rainey. That's in play. 63 for Eisenreich. And the 63 in play for Eisen Eisenreich is a fly to right. One away. So Eisenreich is retired. Brings up Mickey Hatcher, the right fielder. Mickey Hatcher. We get a four, which is patient, and a 43. Patient 43, however, only goes to 35. So 43 will bring it to a pop-up to short. So he pops up to the shortstop Hoffman, two up, two down. Brings up Kent Herbeck. Kent Herbeck. Two out spaces empty, facing Rainey. Six is tough and a 61. Tough 61 is out of range. It's a fly to right. And the inning's over. One, two, three go the Twins here in the top of the first. So, again, Terry Felton. Not getting any early run support to help him. See what he can do uh, in this bottom of the first. So Felton is up there and he'll be facing Jerry Remy, leadoff batter. Current Red Sox color commentator. Facing Felton, it's an 8, which is tough. 71. Tough 71 is a ground ball to second. So one away brings up Dewey Evans. White Evans, right fielder. That's a 5 in play. It's a 28 in play, 28. And that's the very last number in his singles. So White Evans with a one-out single will bring up Jim Rice, left fielder. 3, which is defense, and a 23. So we look at defense, 23. Defense 23 is a range check on the shortstop. So the shortstop in this case is Ron Washington. He is a range of F, which as you might expect is the worst range possible. So it's a 1 to 67. He'll make the play. Anything else will be a base hit. And it's a 6, so it is a base hit. So that's a single, single for Jim Rice. And Evans will hold at second base, only one out, so he's not going to get the extra base. So it'll bring up Carl Yastrzemski. That's a four, which is patient 13. Patient 13's a walk. That's going to load the bases. So Felton in an early jam with the bases loaded and one out needs a double play in the worst way. Facing Carney Lansford. It's a 9, that's patient 44, and that's a base hit for Lansford. Patient 44 is a base hit. So let's see here, the lead die is a 3, which means runner advancement. When there's a lead die of 3, the runner on second will score. So it's a 2-run single. 2-run single by Lansford, and the Sox lead it 2 to nothing. Still only one out in the bottom of the first. Here's Dave Stapleton. That's a seven, which is tough, and it's 16, that's a strikeout. Two down. Not out of the woods yet, gotta get Glenn Hoffman. Two outs and runners at first and second. That's a six, which is patient, 47. That's out of range, that is on 47, that is a ground ball to third. And since it's the third out, it doesn't matter about double plays or force plays. It's just a, an out. And at the end of one complete, it's Boston two and Minnesota nothing. So Felton behind the eight ball early. And Randy Johnson will lead things off against Chuck Rainey. 
See what he can do. Tell he definitely didn't face left. He's only 11 out of 234 bats. So <laughs> platoon all the way. 10 is patient. 15 patient. 15 is a walk. So a leadoff walk for Randy Johnson. Brings up Gary Ward. Four is patient. 85. Patient 85 is a ground ball to short. Could be a double play. The 2D6 is total four, which is less than Ward's double play. It's also less than Rainey's double play, so we do in fact have a 6-4-3 double play. So, two quick outs as Ward grounds into the literal twin killing. And I bring up Gary Gaetti. 10 is patient, 41. And he's going to get hit by a pitch, so he gets plunked. Does Gaetti. He'll reach with two outs for Butch Weiniger, the catcher. Switch hitter. Get a three that's in play and a 17, and that's a base hit. Gaetti, since he runs uh, greater than six, his run rating is higher than six, he will automatically get two bases when there are two outs. So don't even have to consult the, the, die, the dice for that. So runners are at the corners, two outs after that double play. That double play really coming back to bite him. Here's Will Fong. Two is defense, and that's an 81. So defense 81 is an error check on the shortstop, Glenn Hoffman. Glenn Hoffman, his shortstop rating, error-wise, is a three. So in Fenway, error of three means one to 52 will be an error. Anything higher than that, and he'll make the play. It's an 11, so it will be an error. So now we need to go and roll for the, to see what kind of error it is. It's a six, which is a one base error, according to the error chart. So that will be an E6, and the run will score as Gaetti will score from third. Unearned run cuts the lead to two to one. And Weiniger will move to second. So the inning keeps going for Ron Washington, number nine hitter. Two outs, runners at first and second. We get a four, which is patient, 41. And that's a pop-up to second to end the inning. So the Twins at least get on the board. Had to get an error to do it, but they'll take what they can get. We go to the bottom of the second. Two to one Boston. Terry Felton back out on the boat. Facing Rich Gedman. See if he gets any... Motivation from that run support. Six is patient. Patient 59. Patient 59 is a fly to right. One away. Four, Rick Miller. Six is patient. 68. 68 is a ground out to second. So two down. Two up, two down. Maybe Felton can get an easy inning for a change. Here's Jerry Remy. Three is defense, and that's a 98, which means we're looking at an error on the right fielder. Hatcher's error rating is a 4. So on Fenway Park, 4 error rating is a 40, 1 to 40. So 1 to 40, he makes an error. Anything else, he'll make the catch. And, of course, it's an error. So what do you expect? E9, let's see how many bases the error is. It's a 6, which is a 2-base error. So it's a... E9 is going to allow Remy to get to second with two outs. And Felton should be out of the inning, but he's not. He's got to face Dwight Evans. Eight is tough, and a 07, that's a strikeout. So Felton toughened up and got the strikeout to get out of the inning. So, nothing doing for the Red Sox. We go to the third, still two to one, Sox. Rainey. Back out to face the top of the order, Eisenreich. He fly to right his first strip. Seven is in play. 73 is a ground ball to second. Handled by Remy. One away. Brings up the Mick. Mickey Hatcher. Different kind of Mick. That's an eight, which is ballpark. 96, so we're in play for sure with a number that high. 96... 
put him in the in play range. Hatcher 62 in play is it 62 is well at range on in play. It's a ground up to second again. So Remy gets another chance. Makes good. Two up, two down. For Ken Herbeck. Ten is patient. Patient 60. Out of range. It's a fly to right. And the innings over. One, two, three go the twins here in the top of the third. We go to the bottom of the third. Still two one socks. Felton back on to face Jim Rice. Rice singled and scored his first trip. Seven is tough. Tough ten is a strikeout. So Felton puts the K on Rice. Here is Yaz. As I drop one of my dies. There's the white D10. Alright. So Yaz walked his first trip. Nine is patient. 98. 98 is a fly to left. So Yaz flies to left. Two up, two down. Bring up Carney Lansford. Can Felton have a one, two, three inning? Three is defense. 93. 93 is an error rating on the left fielder, Gary Ward. That is a uh, he's an error rating of four, which means a one to forty is an error. Anything else higher than that is going to be an out. It's a seventy-five, so he will make the play, and the inning is over. So Felton settling in, three up, three down. We've played three completed Fenway, score two to one, in favor of the Red Sox. Now Rainey, back out, start the fourth, and we'll be facing Randy Johnson. Lead things off, Johnson walked his first time, eliminated on a double play, and we got a double zero. That's the unusual or rare play. So we'll go to that chart. With There's two separate charts, one with runners on base and one without. So this is the rare play, base is empty chart. We will roll two d6s and see what comes of it. It's a five. Five says line drive single hits pitcher. Check for injury. Runners advance one base. Well, I'm not playing injury, so. Although I guess I should in this case because that could affect it, what's going on here. So the injury factor is normal for Rainey. So we come over here to normal to the injury chart. Under normal, roll two d10s. If it's a zero through 30, then he will be able to stay in the game. Anything above 30, he's got to come out and we got to go to the bullpen. It's a 17, so he's able to stay in there. So Rainey's shaking it off. Although Johnson does get the base hit. Rainey toughing it out. will stay on to face Gary Ward. That's a 6, which is tough, ironically. And a 96, tough 96, is a fly to left. One away for Gary Gaetti. That's a, a 7, which is in play, and a 72. 72 is a fly to center. Two down. Brings up Weiniger. Rainey. Hanging in there. It's a 6. Uh, it's a 6, which is tough, and a 51. Tough 51 is a fly to right. Innings over. So after the leadoff single, nothing else for the Twins. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Still 2-1 to one Sox. Felton. We're facing the bottom portion of the Sox. Order Stapleton, Hoffman, and Gedman. Six is patient. 25. That's going to be a base hit for Stapleton. Base hit. So Stapleton's aboard. Brings up Glenn Hoffman. Five is in play, 23. In play, 23 is just out of range. 23 is a line out to short. So he's going to line it to Ron Washington, one away, for Rich Gedman. Ooh, it's a 19 on the D10s. Seven is tough. Tough 19 is a strikeout. Two down. Gedman is retired. Number nine hitter Rick Miller. 
That is a 6, which is patient, but it's a 97. That's a fly to left. And the inning's over. So four innings in the books. And both pitchers pitching well. It's 2-1 to one Sox. Rainey back out for the fifth. We'll be facing Rob Wilfong. Reached on an error his first chance. Eight is ballpark. 22, that's in the wheelhouse. However, Rob Wilfong didn't hit no home runs, so his, he has no chance of a home run in the wheelhouse. A 1-16 to 16 will get him a hit, but anything else will be an out. And that's a 33, so that's going to be a grounder to first. So he found the wheelhouse, but Wilfong, punch and Judy hitter, couldn't do anything with it. So here now is Ron Washington. It's a 6, which is tough, and it's a 98. That's a fly to left. Anytime you get those 90, high 90 numbers, it's a fly to left. So that's two away. Jim Eisenreich. Top of the order. 0 for 2, flew to right and grounded to second. 7 is in play, 75, that's a fly to center. And the top of the fifth is complete. 3 up, 3 down go the Twins. And we're cruising right along here. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Terry Felton back out to face the top of the order, Jerry Remy. It'll be Remy, Evans, and Rice. As Felton's going through the order for the third time. 5 is in play, 81, that's a fly to center. One away for Dewey Evans. Five is in play again. 53. That is a 53. Is a ground ball to third. Handled by Gaetti. Two down. Jim Rice. So Felton pitching very well, but getting no run support. Six is patient. 22. Patient 22 will be a walk. So a two-out walk to Rice. Only the second walk of the game. Brings up Yaz. Five is in play. 52. That's out of range. 52. Grounder to third. That's going to end the inning. So five innings in the books. Still two to one Red Sox. And now Chuck Rainey is coming in. Now his... Fatigue rating along as, as, as is Felton's is 6. So we'll keep an eye on his fatigue here and see how long he can keep going. He'll be facing Mickey Hatcher. Bullpen might start to stir down there a little bit. 7 is in play, 19, and play 19 is a single for Mickey Hatcher. Lead off single. Maybe the Twins can get something going for Felton here. Here's Herbeck. Eight is ballpark, 32, and for a lefty, that's going to be in play. So we'll roll her back in play. 50 in play, and that's going to be a ground ball to third. Now, will it be a double play? That's the question. It's a seven. Her back is a six on a double play, so this will just be a fielder's choice. So it's a fielder's choice, and Hatcher's out five to four. One away for Randy Johnson. I know some people in those double plays like to keep the original 2D6 roll, but I like to re-roll them. Plus, I already picked it up, so I don't remember what it was anyway. So it's a moot point. Here's Johnson. Eight is ballpark. 35. Again, that is in play. Because Fenway for lefties is 1 to 18. That's a 50 again. So how many times can that happen? 50 off of Johnson is a ground ball to second. So again, we will roll the two D6s. Get a 10, so that's definitely a fielder's choice. Four, six. So after the leadoff single, two consecutive fielder's choices. Brings up Gary Ward. Six is tough, and a three, that's a strikeout. So nothing doing there. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Still two to one Red Sox. Rainey may be able to go a seventh inning the way he pitched there, so we'll see. Felton facing Carney Lansford. Ten is wheelhouse, unfortunately, for Felton. 
And in the wheelhouse, we get a 0 5, so that means Carney Lansford has just gone deep for a home run. And the Red Sox now lead it 3 to 1. So, not what Felton was looking for there. He put one right in the wheelhouse. Carney Lansford didn't miss it. Here's Stapleton. 12 is tough. And a 12 is a strikeout. 12 and 12. All right, here's Hoffman. Six is patient, but a 94 is a fly to left. Remember, anything in the 90s pretty much is a fly to left. Or fly to right, or whatever the case may be. If you get a 90s, you're out, put it that way. All right. Almost all the time. Here's Gedman. It's a four, that's patient. 99 though, so that is a fly to left once again. Innings over. So six innings are in the books. It's Red Sox three and the Twins one. And that's gonna might be all for Felton. I don't know if they can go any further with him. They if he's gonna get a win, they gotta score some runs here in the top of the seventh to back him up. Here's Gaietti. 7 is in play, 71, fly to center. So the Twins unable to do anything with Chuck Rainey. He's only given up one run, and that was unearned. His Weininger, 12, is wheelhouse, and a 4. That's a home run for Butch Weininger. So Rainey put one in the wheelhouse, and Weininger didn't miss it. He was only a 1 to 20, but we got a 4, so that was enough. Cuts the lead to 3-2, to two, so maybe there's hope. Here's Will Fong. 6 is tough. Tough 22 is a strikeout. So he struck him out. Out number 2 for Ron Washington. So it looks more and more like Felton may not get that chance to get a win. 9 is patient. Patient 61 is a fly to right. Inning is over. So that's going to be all for Rainey. Seven innings is going to do it for him. He will get some relief in the, the eighth and ninth innings. Let's see about Felton. We've got Miller, Remy, and Evans. Some lefties coming up, so they're going to go to the bullpen. Unfortunately, Felton unable to get that victory today, tonight, in game two. But Daryl Jackson, the lefty, will come in. And he will be facing Rick Miller. Let's look at the numbers on Felton real quick before I forget. He gave up three runs. They were all earned. One home run. He walked two. Struck out one, two, three, four, five. Pitched six innings. How many hits? One, two, three, four, five hits. So a quality start, just no run support. So now Jackson facing Rick Miller. It's a six for Jackson. Oh, I got these backwards. Six for Jackson is patient. And a ten, it's a patient ten against the lefty, is still a walk for Rick Miller. So leadoff walk brings up Jerry Remy. Remy steps to the plate. He may bunt. So let's check. Uh, he's got 18 sacrifice hits on the season, on that 82 season. Uh, let's check his bunting capability. He is a B bunter. So let's take a look here at the chart and see how that's going to play out. We go to our sacrifice bunt chart. Sacrifice bunt chart right here. He's a B bunter. He becomes a C bunter because we're expecting it. And we're going to roll two D10s plus a D6 to see who feels it. That's a 36. C and a 36 is a good sacrifice. Die is a four, which means it went back to the pitcher. So that was a sacrifice bunt back to the pitcher Jackson. He will throw to the second baseman, Will Fong, covering. So that is a sacrifice hit, one to four. Moves Miller into scoring position for Dewey Evans. 
Now Evans and Rice and with the righties coming up, I think they're going to go to the bullpen again. So that will a short work for Daryl Jackson. He walks one and gets pitches one third of an inning, but the runner on first is his responsibility. So Ron Davis, actually not Ron Davis, it is going to he's their closer, so that wouldn't make any sense. It's going to be Doug Corbett. Doug Corbett is on. So Doug Corbett, the right hand side winding right hander, is on to face Evan. Seven is tough. Oh eight, that's a strikeout. So he got the whiff on Evans. Two down for Jim Rice. Rice the batter. It's a four, which is in play in a 42. And that's going to be a ground ball back to the pitcher. And so an easy out there. Corbett makes the play to end the inning. So close the book on Jackson. So after seven complete, it is Boston three, Minnesota two. We'll be right back with the new Red Sox pitcher. All right, we're back for the top of the eighth. A little administrative duties here. Chuck Rainey has been lifted by the Red Sox. He finishes seven innings, four hits, two runs, one earned, one walk, two strikeouts. Did give up the home run to Weininger. And he also hit a battery hit, Gary Gaetti. But it does stand to be the winner if the bullpen can hold it. Jim Eisenreich, the top of the order for the Twins, is scheduled. And Herbeck is the third batter in the innings, so two lefties out of three. So the manager, uh, Ralph Houck, has gone to his lefty out of his bullpen, Tom Bergmeier. So Bergmeier is on. But then Billy Gardner of the Twins has countered and brought in pinch hitter John Castino, a righty. So he will pinch hit for Eisenreich. And then... In the bottom of the eighth, Bobby Mitchell will take over in center field. So Castino got to pinch hit against Bergmeier. We get a five off of Bergmeier's in play, and we get the double zero. So we get another, another rare play. So again, base is empty on this rare play. So we'll roll and see what the rare play is talking about. It's a ten. Rare play ten. Catcher hit by foul ball. Check for injury. All right, so we're checking for Gedman. And let's check Gedman's injury factor. Gedman is normal on his injury results. So, under again, when you're normal, 0 to 30, 0 to 30, he stays in the game. I think higher than 30, he's got to come out. It's a 98, so he's got to come out because that would put him injured plus 10 games. But obviously, this is a one game. I'm not doing a season replay, but he does need to come out now. So Gedman will be lifted. He will be out of there. And the new catcher will be Gary Allenson. So foul tip caught Gedman. Maybe in a dangerous spot as he was crouching. And uh, he is unable to answer the bell. So Gary Allenson is on to catch. Here in the eighth, and we'll do his ratings real quick. Allenson is a B rating, air rating of four, arm rating of two. His running is a six, and he's a three F. All right. Okay, so there you go. Gary Allenson in now to take on the face the injured. Uh, the injured Gedman and uh, Castino still at bat because that was a foul tip. So still at bat. That's an eight. It's in play 22. In play 22 against the lefty. In play 22 against the lefty. It's a base hit for Castino. So Castino reaches. And let's see about the running here. We may just go ahead and substitute Mitchell to run for him. Mitchell runs at a seven. He runs at a seven. So he may as well do that. So Mitchell's into pinch run. And he'll stay in the game to play center field. And Castino did his job. Got a base hit. Got on base. So that'll bring up Mickey Hatcher. Tying run is at first base here in the top of the eighth. Hatcher, nine is in play, 75. That's a fly to center. One away. One down for Herbeck. Another lefty on lefty matchup. That's a four, which is patient, 79. That's another fly to center. So two down, and now Randy Johnson would be coming up, but obviously he didn't bat against lefties hardly at all, so 
He will be lifted for a pinch hitter, Jesus Vega. And Vega will stay in the game to DH for however long this game goes. But right now he's got a big pinch hitting duty. So Jesus Vega will be in there to face Bergmeier. And see Vega faced more lefties than he did righties. Hit about the same against both, but he faced more lefties. Three is tough. Tough 38 against a lefty is a base hit. Look at that. 38 against a lefty is a base hit. And with Mitchell running more than a six, that's a two base advancement automatically. So runners are now at the corners with two outs for Gary Ward. And Ralph Houck will go strutting to the mound to get Bergmeier. So Bergmeier couldn't get it all the way done. So they will go to Bob Stanley, the right-hander. So Bob Stanley is on. See what he can do. Bergmeier pitches two-thirds of an inning. Gives up two hits. No runs yet, but the runners are his responsibility. No walks, no strikeouts. So Stanley to face Ward. Ward's had a rough day. He's 0 for 3, a double play, and a strikeout. But he can make up for it with one swing. 7 is in play. 83, he won't do it. That's a ground ball to short. And the inning is over. So Stanley helps him do things right with that ground out to end the inning. So we go to the bottom of the eighth. Still a 3 to 2 ball game. Let's see now. Yaz, Lansford, and Stapleton will be up for the Red Sox here in the eighth. And Corbett, Corbett only pitched two-thirds of an inning, so they'll keep him in. His fatigue is long, so he's not going to have any issues with that. So, Yaz leading off. Nine is in play, 47. 47 for Yaz is a ground ball to third. So, handled over there by Gaetti, one away for Carney Lansford. Four is in play, 84, and that's a fly, a ground ball to short. Ground ball to short for Lansford on the 84. Here is Stapleton. Nine is in play, 53. In play, 53 is a fly to right, and Corbett goes an inning and two-thirds and gets one strikeout, gives up nothing. So he certainly helped his team stay in the game. But now it's the bottom of the ninth. Bob Stanley going back out. Mark Clear is in the bullpen in case Stanley falters. But they're going to give Stanley every opportunity to get the save. He only faced one batter in the eighth, so he's still good to go. Top of the ninth, it'll be Gaetti, Weiniger, and Wilfong. Although we could see a pinch hitter for Will Fong, possibly. Here's Gaetti. Eight is patient. Patient 75 is a fly to center. One away. So one away. I want to bring up Weiniger. Let's see who the Twins have on their bench. They've already used Castino. They've got Butera, Fiedo, and Bush. So Randy Bush is a possibility, and he's going to pinch it for Will Fong next. So Randy Bush is going to pinch it for Will Fong when the time comes, but right now it is Butch Weiniger. Seven is in play, 12. In play, 12 is a base hit for Weiniger. So Weiniger reaches. And now Randy Bush is in to pinch hit. Big spot. Nine is tough. Tough 06 is a strikeout. So Stanley got him for out number two. Bush fails. Last chance is Ron Washington with Weiniger at first and two outs. It's 11. That's ballpark. 79, though, is in play. Not wheelhouse, but in play. 56 in plays out of range. That's a fly to right. And the ball game is over. The Red Sox defeat the Twins 3-2. to two, And they pin the loss again on Terry Felton. Rainey the wins. Stanley the save going in inning in the third. 
gives up one hit and gets a strikeout nothing else all right so totals on the game for the twins we are looking at two runs seven hits one error for the Red Sox three runs only five hits and one error but the hits were big ones the home run um, and also they got three of those five hits in the first inning so that kind of gave them those two runs they didn't really do much after that only in fact the only really thing they did was that home run by Lansford but that was enough to be the difference in the game so unfortunately Terry Felton unable to get the win here on payoff pitch so we'll go back to Stratomatic for game three of the playoff and uh, have to see who that is against I believe yep it's gonna be Saturday May 8th 1982 in Milwaukee against the Brew Crew and Mike Caldwell so again he's got to face a heavy hitting lineup on the road does Terry Felton so it does not get easier he gets more difficult so <laughs> cross your fingers and see what he can do but well, that's going to go from here. Hope you enjoyed that presentation of Payoff Pitch Baseball. Red Sox again get the victory 3-2 to two and keep Terry Felton on the schneid as far as the win column goes. Hope you enjoyed that and hope you enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play, however you choose to play it. And as usual, I will see you all down the road.